24 years. Yeah. It's the 24th anniversary of Radio Dead Air this week. Some of the people watching right now were not born yet when you started this show. Fruitsy, fruitsy. Right? I haven't been on it quite that long. I'll be honest, I don't know how many years I've been doing this. I want to say like maybe 15. Uh, 14. Yeah, 14. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So we start about 2010. So 14. Yeah. I, I, it boggles the mind, does it not? I start, when we started doing, this was on dial-up when this started happening, when I started doing this. And audio dial-up, and audio only, a f***ing dial-up. I don't know if you remember, some of you might, some of you are going, shut up, old man. Um, When you bought a computer, in the, the, the beige ones, those boxes, the beige boxes, like especially, uh, yeah, especially uh, uh, Gateway used to do this. Remember the cow, the boxes with the cow splotches on them. My too? mom had one. They would give you this microphone with the computer that was about this big, and it had a big red plug on the other end, and it was the cheapest, cheapest, chintziest thing. Just terrible little, I mean, the, the microphone on your telephone was probably better. And that's what I used for a long time. Now look at me, I got this big night honking gigantic thing here. Now you got like a Death Star. <laughs> I have many buttons, that is true. I, I, I started this four or five homes ago yeah back when i was living in connecticut uh two marriages ago yeah it's been a long time and yet every week there's still stuff there's You've never on, not stuff you've been on nine years longer than supernatural Well, terrifyingly enough, Supernatural, they ran out of things. We, we never run out of things. Never run out of things. No. Each week, Catherine, the radio that there I found the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, we're starting in Raleigh, North Carolina this week. Now, we've seen instances where people have uh, stolen a car and they have... Uh, I didn't do the video thing. Whoops. I got a lot of buttons. There we go. There's the other button. We've seen people where, where they've stolen a car and they've used it in the course of a robbery in some manner or another. Sometimes smashing it into the building for the purposes of the, of the robbery. It's just this time of all the places of, of all the. This is what you picked, huh? I'm gonna send this over to you. This, this is what you fucking picked. Really? Car stolen from Raleigh home. Crashes into vape store. Raleigh police are searching for a driver caught on camera using a stolen car to crash into a smoke and vape store. Rachel Kincaid said Thursday night she left her car uh, parked in the garage of her North Raleigh home. The garage door is open and the keys were inside the car, allowing the thief to easily steal. I mean, sometimes you, you don't do that. Don't do that. I know. I, I, I Even if you lock the garage door, you probably don't, don't do that. Surveillance video shows Kincaid's car barreling into the front of nonstop tobacco and vape. In the video, the driver is seen jumping out of the car and grabbing three jars of CBD. 
If you're going to do all that shit, steal the good stuff. It, Not it, that it, CBD it, isn't good stuff. It's very useful. But like steal the harder uh, stuff if you're going to go to the trouble. I, we have different opinions on CBD. I tend to feel that CBD is, is a little bit of it, it, it's a little bit of uh, of uh, a placebo sort of thing. OK, I find it really helpful with my migraines. It works better for me than the prescription they give me for migraines. Um, but like, you know, everyone's mileage varies. But just the, the, of all the things, three jars, is, you're in a vape shop. Yeah. yeah. Even, even the tobacco is worth more than that shit. Yeah. And steal yeah, stuff like, you can sell. You, bongs I mean, like, are, it's you, bongs are us in there. You stole in a car and wrecked a shop, you may as well get your fucking money's worth. And that's the thing. You could have hit a liquor store. You could have hit a jewelry store. A pawn shop. You could have, you could have fucking drove it, driven it into a fucking bank. Maybe that would have worked. Maybe. Post office. I've heard that's CBDs what... can also help with appetite during chemo. Honestly, in my experience, you need the THC for that to help with the nausea. Post office is the one people never rob and they should because the stamps, the stamps, oh. are the, the fucking stamps, man, though you can move that. Yeah, shit. but is there like a black market for stamps? You don't need to black market them. It's they, they are money. Stamps are effectively money. If you're mailing a lot of stuff. If you're not mailing a lot of stuff. And I think uh, like people don't people don't value the mail as much as they used to, because one of my jobs involves asking people for a mailing address to mail them things. And I can't tell you how many people give me a street address with no town and zip code. So I have to Google it and hope there's no duplicates uh, or give me an email address when I ask for their postal mailing address. That's that's not how that works. No, this, this, this I is need not to the matrix. paper. Yeah. yeah. Just it. I'm sitting here with that Homer, you know, money can be used to trade it for good and serve. Also, and yeah, services. the post office is federal. You could have any other place that would have had money. You could have used hit used a car to rob the place and then come back and bought the three jars of the CBD. I mean, alternately, you could have stolen the three jars of CBD without driving through the front of the building. It's not it's not that difficult. You probably would have had a better chance of getting away with it. Had you not driven through the front of the building. I, I mean, just, I, it sounds like you really, really need the CBD. <laughs> Because you clearly have some either rage or anxiety issues. Yes. So good luck with that. Hope they have it in prison. <laughs> uh, well, so I've been doing this for, for 24 years. I am getting along in my, my age. I, I wonder what I'm going to be doing in 25 more, 24, 25 more years. Um, if we're still doing this in 25 years... I don't know what you think about that. Like if we're if we're sitting here with like white hair, drinking our eating jello, mm. just being like, oh, the kids today with their AI implants in their brains. That might get like, sad. Well, you I I this this next guy is a little bit of a an inspiration in that regard. This guy, this fucking guy, this is from Japan. Appropriately enough. Uh, Ninja Burglar 74 behind eight year crime spree caught by cops in Japan. Authorities in Japan arrested a ninja burglar believed to be behind hundreds of break ins during an eight year period in Osaka, only to find out he was 74 years old. 
Uh, Mitsuaki uh, Tanagawa stole more than 30 million yen, about $260,000 during the course of his crime spree, uh, most by mostly stealing cash as people slept. Now, we say it's like $260,000. It's like, oh, it's a quarter of a million dollars. But it's over eight years, right? Yeah. So that's just sort of kind of like, you know, a minimum wage job. Yeah. I blew uh, through about that much just having cancer. Yeah. Um, authorities in Osaka have been stumped by the string of burglaries, which their only lead being surveillance footage of a thief with a neck warmer pulled up to his nose and a hood down to his eyebrows. There, there he is. Um, uh, he was dressed in all black, just like a ninja. Cops got a break back in May when his neck warmer slipped and police were able to identify the ninja on camera. Police realized who the mass thief was. A search of criminal records revealed uh, Tanagawa had a previous record of thefts. <laughs> Police were finally able to catch the agile thief as he was coming home at 4 a.m. from robbing an electronics store. Tanagawa told police he embarked on his life of crime because, quote, he hated working and thought stealing is quicker. The burglar also bolstered. You're not he, wrong. He also boasted he only needed 10 minutes to break into a house. Quote, if I were younger, I would have been caught. I'll quit now as I'm 74 and old enough. That I got one told police after his arrest. I just, And you're probably going to prison. Yeah, th there is that. That that lot, lot, lot less of a chance to rob things when you're in prison, yeah. which is sort of the, the point. And I mean, I don't know Japanese law. Prison. Maybe maybe after maybe they have like a mercy rule where after a certain age, they're like, OK, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I kind of feel for this guy. It's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Crime. Like, hey, if the, 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 like, every damn AI company is stealing everything that's not nailed down, why can't I? It's quite literally the American way. He's in Japan. True, but, but you I know, take we. Point. We've exported our bullshit. Yeah. They, like England has Black Friday now. We, we're terrible. We're just, we're, it, just, we're just infectious. 74 years old. I am not 74. I'm in my 40s no. right now. And even I'm thinking, hell no. Right? That's a lot of shit. To, that's a lot of work. Like, I I just 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 hearing about this guy is making me tired. Where are you getting the energy from, my man? I mean, God bless you. <laughs> I like that he was totally like they said they, they, they started like surveilling him and they watched him quote doddering out from his house like any other old man during daytime he then went to an abandoned apartment room where he changed and waited until it got dark he's fucking batman <laughs> <laughs> although batman stops the criminals he's like during the day he's mr magoo yeah He's got a fucking oh, alter I'm ego, so, right? I'm so old. And then he just like at night becomes he's, he's a the fucking prowler. ninja. Yeah. Was... <laughs> you know, they're going to make a movie out of this. And the tragedy is they're going to make it with a white dude. Yeah. It's going to be like Jason Statham. He's not old <laughs> enough. It's going to be Liam Neeson. It's going to be Liam yeah, Neeson. They're going to make this movie. Yeah. It's going to be Liam Neeson. Well, all right. Were, were you around? Uh, it, was, it wasn't last Friday. Was it last Friday or the Friday before? The the crowd strike thing. Where all of the. Yeah. Yeah. All of the planes and the banks and everything. Because they, they screwed it up. They goofed up an update. They knocked out businesses around the globe. I've been extremely now, lucky two times. I've been in New York when a major thing grounds thousands of flights and I've been unaffected. Hmm. Well, it, the crowd strike is acknowledging. I was, I was tempted to put this one on my, on the tech Q and a uh, show, but th this is more our things. Um, crowd strike is acknowledging 
the 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 hardship they put us through, and they they are offering an apology and recompense in the form of a ten dollar gift card. Okay, okay. I mean, listen, that's more than most companies do. Let's be honest. Crowd Your bank is a big data breach, and they're like, "Sucks to be you." CrowdStrike, the cybersecurity firm that crashed millions of computers with a botched update all over the world last week, is offering its partners a $10 Uber Eats gift card as an apology. According to several people who say they received the gift card, as well as a source who also received one. On Tuesday, a source told TechCrunch they received an email from CrowdStrike offering them the gift card because the company recognizes, quote, the additional work that your July 19th incident has caused. And for that, we send our heartfelt thanks and apologies for the inconvenience. To express our gratitude, your next cup of coffee or late night snack is on us. Motherfucker, have you 10 bucks gift card with Uber Eats? That ain't Mike that is, is saying literally, there aren't even valid. Mike is saying there aren't even valid I, I know, gift cards. We're, we're, Mike will get there. Mike Sorry. will get there. I jumped we'll ahead. Get there. Sorry, my yeah, bad. You did. Damn it, Mike. Um, you called just on Saturday. Yeah, 10, 10 fucking bucks. That is not going to get you anything. Get it, not not yeah. even anything. That doesn't even cover the driver's, um, the delivery fee oh, and the see, driver's I tip. I don't Uber Eats. I DoorDash, so I don't. Like, you, you, you get this, you, you can order like a sugar packet. That'll cover it. <laughs> 10 fucking dollars. You but can wait. order a picture of a cup of coffee. <laughs> Yeah. But wait. Um uh yeah, it, it was later reported that the uh when TechCrunch checked the voucher, the Uber Eats page pro pro provided an error message that said the gift card quote has been canceled by the issuing party and is no longer valid. So they sent out the gift cards which was a paltry piece of shit for crashing millions of computers around the planet. And then they're like, wait, can we afford this? Rescind them, rescind them. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Like it's $10 seems shitty, but like $10 times how many? Yeah. Cause that could actually be a huge layout for them. Yeah, the, 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 the article says that, Uber flagged it as fraud because of the high usage rates. Yeah, I imagine. You didn't plan I that fucking, out. I fucking imagine this the high the usage rates. Of, and I was stuck in line behind this person the other day at a coffee shop who was there buying like 20 gift cards and holding up the whole line. Because you're all like on your way to something and have to get 20 gifts. Just the, the utter fucking gall of these motherfuckers. Well, we've ruined your businesses and cost you millions of dollars. So here's a gift card. And people are be stranded a, in airports. That better be a gift card for a fucking car. That'd be a big gift card for a oh. Lambo. I don't think they can afford that. No, they probably can't. They, they're they going to have some issues from this. I will, I, I'm probably thinking what they're oh, thinking is, girls. wait, if they take the gift card, we can say they don't have the right to sue us. That honestly might be the play. It's <laughs> like if you take the pardon, you're admitting guilt. Yeah. Like you fucking might be Uber right there. Idiots. I don't know the legality of that, but it could be like we have compensated you. Therefore, or in order to get in order to use the gift card, you might have to click a waiver that says you won't sue. Like that's possible. So next up, we're heading to East Point, Georgia. Bad managers. My God, I have had bad managers before. So we've all worked the retail jobs. We've all worked the fast food jobs. We've all had the bad managers. But 
there's a bad manager that's just, you know, they put you on the schedule for not enough fucking hours because they just don't personally like you. They they give you the shit jobs because, you know, you're not you're not the boss's best friend. And then then there's the boss who pulls a gun on you. Chipotle employee says his boss chased him at gunpoint because he didn't take out the trash. Wow. East Point, Georgia restaurant worker says his manager chased him from the business and threatened his life at gunpoint because he forgot to take out all of the trash before clocking out. Now, East Point police are trying to track down the manager. Quentin Collins, 29, told Channel 2's Tom Jones he still can't believe what happened. Quote, it's like you write up a person for forgetting to do that. You don't chase them down and pull a gun. That's other world. Honestly, you don't even write them up unless they've done it every day for a week. You just go, hey, you forgot to take out the trash. Don't do that tomorrow. Collins says he was his first week of training at the restaurant. Wow. He's, he says he had no run-ins with his manager before that. He said he clocked out in a hurry to catch the MARTA bus. His manager screamed at him about the trash not being taken out. Colin says he continued out the door to catch the bus. He says that when his manager chased him and threatened him at gunpoint. Colin says his manager became distracted by a traffic and a nearby cop car. That's when he got away. So you chased him out into the street there's a cop car nearby. He sees you waving the gun. You're, you're just, you're perfect at this. You're doing a great job. Bro, it's the garbage at a Chipotle. We're not curing brain cancer here. It's the garbage at a Chipotle. At a Chipotle. I understand it's an inconvenience. But we're, yeah. we're not putting people on the moon. Like, it's not that fucking serious. Uh, you pull, like, you, a gun over the fucking, you, in the time it took you to chase the man down with the gun waving around, you could have just taken the garbage out yourself and given him shit about it the next well, time he was on shift. Managers don't take out the garbage. No, managers take out a gun, apparently. I don't know. I guess I would Chipotle's love to see. It's a shame that you can't get individual franchise reviews on like Glassdoor because whew, that would be a read. Yeah. <laughs> this this doesn't seem to me like it's a first time sort of infraction. You don't just one day no. pull a gun at the Chipotle. There's got to have been a, a series of behavior that led up to this. Good Lord. Manager has not been to work since the incident. Who's no running the shit. Chipotle? <laughs> Apparently, this Chipotle is the only thing holding the fucking universe together. It's our it, this Chipotle is the anchor being, you guys. <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, so who's mother, running the Chipotle? The fuck? Like now, now you ain't got no now, like. You know he's indignant about the... And now I'm in trouble. Why am I in trouble? Yeah. He's the one that didn't take out the garbage. Exactly. That's... <laughs> I'm going to get oh. comments for this, but th that is such man logic. <laughs> We're moving on to Canada. And this is a very un-Canada... Like... like it, 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 Incident, I guess you call it, because I've been to Canada a few times. I love Canada because it's nice up there and the people are nice and shit's clean. And I, I we used to do a, a convention in Hamilton, Ontario, which everyone goes, oh, that's the bad part of, of, of Canada. I'm like, really? And it's like, it's the, the, it's super nice and there's stores and it's, oh, this is the bad part. It's like, they're talking about like, it's like New Jersey or some shit. And you're like, what's and it's the like, good part? 
What's the good part? Can I go yeah. There? Can I go there? <laughs> Shit, this is In pretty good nice. Part, everybody no. speaks French, though, so. Ah, yes. So this next story doesn't really gel with that image of, but I guess, you know, Canada takes all kinds. Uh, it makes no sense. Toronto building had to tell its residents to stop throwing feces at electrical workers. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Eh? Um, uh, I thought y'all were polite. Many Torontonians are appalled after learning some residents at St. John, St. James Tower apartment uh, were throwing feces at electrical contractors brought in working to restore power to some units. So these weren't people who were, these were people who were trying to help you. Yeah. They were trying to fix the shit and you threw shit that, Quote, dear residents, it has come to our attention that a small group of residents are repeatedly interfering, threatening, and or harassing members of the electrical contracting team. Reports of unacceptable behavior include throwing human waste from upper level balconies at workers below, aggressive language, and hostile interactions. I would think that actually, no, it's the, the, the poop would kind of rank higher than the yeah. aggressive language. These actions I'll tell, are just I'll take someone telling me to fuck off any day of the week over them throwing poop at me. These actions are disrupting efforts to repair the building will only serve to prolong the restoration effort. You, I love the the, 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 the letter is so fucking polite. I love the gentle parenting here. <laughs> it makes now no I want sense. You to think about is this a good <laughs> choice or is this a bad choice? <laughs> It makes no sense why anyone would want to interfere with this work, cause additional delays, contribute to an already challenging situation. We firmly believe that most residents will be shocked to learn this behavior is occurring. Nevertheless, we want it to stop. <laughs> that is the most Canadian letter. It's like the it's like the 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 committee from the good place, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we don't want to we don't want to upset you. Your feelings are valid, but maybe we express those feelings in a healthier way, you know? Yeah, it's throwing poop. Luke is somewhere is, laughing that he's not here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Just hurling your own. This is howler monkey behavior. This is literally right? what howler monkeys do. You're throwing you have, your own. You have, you have run way back down the evolutionary scale. Hey, what, what did that? They, they came to make the fix that. Why? Why would you do yes. this? What? What? What could here? What, what could they have possibly done to trigger this reaction in you? To be throwing. Yeah, the that's what I want to know is like, how did this happen? And here's the other part about it that's wonderful. It's a whole apartment building. But they don't name names. They don't single out anybody. So everybody in that apartment building is trying to suss out who threw the poop. And everybody's and got know, their own theories. You go anywhere and they ask for your address and, and they're like, oh, the shit building. The shit building. Like, you got a big brown S on your chest now if you live in that building. Doesn't matter if you were involved. Who does? Why? Of all the things to throw, if, like, if I'm yeah. in a throwing things mood, there are many things I could throw. I could throw utensils. I could throw a jar of mayonnaise. I don't know about you. I don't want to handle I'm not my own gonna, shit. I'm not going to throw my poop. Why would like I want to do that? We have for it for a reason. Why? Why would you? What? Who raised you? Like, I'm thinking about Letter there, Kenny. Did it's you ever read that novel? DJs from Up Country. They made, they made a. Uh, they made a movie out of this book with Tom Hiddleston called High Rise. And it's this luxury high rise that's designed so like the residents never have to leave. But then like the elevators go out 
and it just goes full Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Apparently that was a documentary. Okay, so our last one this week. This is from Lincoln, Nebraska. This falls under the YouTube was a fucking mistake. Oh, no. Um, amazingly, no one was hurt. Because, like, holy shit. I had to, I double checked a few times to make sure nobody was hurt from this shit. I don't see how it's a fucking miracle. Teen accused of tampering with rail filming derailment in Bennett. A Bennett teen is of accused like of a train, a train. Bennett teen is accused of tampering with a rail and filming the resulting derailment on April 21st. A BNSF train came off the rails at the railroad crossing near Moreau and Juniper Streets. Two locomotives and five fully loaded rail cars came off the rails but remained upright as they collided with an empty car. Derailment ca caused a total of $350,000 in damages between the rail, locomotives, and rail car. A 17-year-old boy and train enthusiast was at the scene filming the derailment. He shared the video with 1011 News following the derailment. A search warrant filed last week shows investigators with BNSF are now interested in searching the boy's phone and digital cameras. Further investigations led authorities to think the boy had tampered with the rail prior to the derailment. The boy, who had reported the derailment, asked the investigator what had happened. When the investigator said the cause was undetermined, the boy said, quote, Obviously, a switch was flipped the wrong way. So you literally flipped the switch the wrong way, caused a derailment. Then you ran up to the investigators and say, well, that's a classic switch being flipped the wrong way. And showed them your video that you took. Show yeah, you see? Like, I got the whole thing. Like, just, you, yeah, like, you were in the perfect place at the perfect time to catch the derailment. Professor Moriarty, you are not, young man. Warren says the 17-year-old boy was I then know, seen. Like, we've seen tons of movies where the criminal, like, taunts the cops. No. You're not, you're not that guy. Authorities later went through surveillance video from the area and discovered a vehicle and a lone driver traveling the area just before the derailment. The warrant shows the 17-year-old boy was then seen in a 1996 Buett Park Avenue before setting up his camera. Tripod was set up near the crossing just four minutes before the train derailed. That's lucky. In May, investigators matched the vehicle seen in surveillance footage with the Boys Park Avenue. Uh, with the Boys Park Avenue. Uh, investigators filed search warrants to review video evidence for the boy's phone and video camera. Warrant shows the boy could be charged with criminal mischief over 5,000. Yeah. Here's the thing. You <sighs> could have killed people. Because you don't, like, maybe you have the, the, the schedule memorized. Maybe you're, like, there are passenger train tracks and cargo train tracks, but... Even if you know for a fact that what's coming is going to be a freight train and not a passenger train, you don't know what its haul is. Like, you guys remember a little thing that happened in Ohio, like, last year, right? Where a train yeah. derailed and it was full of really Vinyl terrible chemicals. Crap. Yeah. Like, you don't know what that train is hauling. So even if you know that there's, like, no people on it, you could still kill a whole fuck ton of people, including yourself, by the way. But it looked but cool wait. on video, I guess. But wait, it gets better. Oh, no. Um, let's see. YouTube video. The video's caption promises a dramatic story. Join us as we delve into the dramatic events that unfolded when a falsely set switch altered the course of destiny. Unbeknownst to the crew of the loaded Arbor coal train, a parked deflective uh, coal car lay in wait on the wrong track, setting the stage for disaster. The suspect filmed the second the train derailed. So he 
he filmed it. He can be heard yelling, oh, my God, oh, my God, as the train goes off the tracks. Court documents reveal the teenager allegedly told the railway investigator he was a train enthusiast. So, yeah, he, he made the video and then in he the put it up on his YouTube. Is interested in fire. Hey, he's a train enthusiast. Fucking YouTube. In the way that Jeffrey Dahmer was a people person. <laughs> Fucking YouTube. See, and I, right, like we're on we're on the YouTubes. But you yep. know what we do? We sit here, we read jokes, we, re we read stories, we make jokes. I tell weird stories about my life and we complain about the damn kids. Yeah, I don't go out and make these happen. No, I don't. The need worst to. thing we're hurting is somebody's feelings. Yeah. And if we've sincerely hurt your feelings, I really am sorry. We're not trying. I don't know. I, I don't give a fuck about that guy at the Chipotle with a gun. Fuck that guy. Yeah, fair. Yeah, fu fuck, fuck that. that fuck, fuck that guy. Fuck his feelings. I don't give a fuck. Fucking YouTube. We, I don't go out and make these things. Imagine if I could, though. That would be amazing. I mean, technically so, you could. Imagine if you go back through all these the, the, the decades of me doing this shit and being like, how the fuck? That would all be this, weirdly amazing. All this if trace this back to time, one guy. Yeah. <laughs> at least like one story every week was you. <laughs> and it was and it was all the poop once. <laughs> Every poop story we've done over the last 14 years has been Nash, actually. The first thing we learned this week is if you have to stage a disaster for YouTube, it's not worth it. It's it's not. It really isn't. I, like, I know a lot of people say get therapy is some kind of dunk. I don't. I think everybody should get therapy personally, but especially you should really get you should talk to somebody. You're not OK. There's this. There's the guy that that crashed his plane and fake like, you know, fake the, yeah. the plane for the fucking all for fucking YouTube. The thing what fuckers are doing to their wives for YouTube and TikTok. It just no. You're welcome. What the fuck? Anyway, um, we we've learned that if the electrical workers come to fix your building, don't throw poop at them. I don't know why we have to explain this, but don't throw. In fact, you know what? Don't throw poop at anybody. Yeah, That's, just in general. Just, just don't throw poop. Just don't at do anybody that. or anything. Just just don't throw it. <laughs> just don't unless they really want you to and it's an agreed upon thing right. you know we're yeah. not here to kink shame but if they if you don't have specific consent to do that assume nobody Dude. wants your poop man i was unless, i like, was i was two and i got the message through my head that the poop goes in the potty two yeah it's, yeah. it's two I did babysit a kid who took off his diaper and painted the walls of his room with his poop. That was awesome. They used to duct tape the diaper shut to keep <laughs> on. Kids. That's why I have cats, by the way. We've learned that uh, um, managerial skills don't include waving the fucking gun around. That's That's no. not... It's not how that works. Unless you're managing Tombstone. But you're managing a Chipotle. We learn if you crash if computers around the planet, wreck the global economy for an entire day. A gift card isn't going to sort it. It's just $10. We'll call it even, yeah? And then you have the goal to yank that shit back. I mean, there's there's crass and then there's just crass. God yeah. damn. 
We have learned that you're never too old to be a ninja burglar. Apparently. That's it's never too late, guys. Alan Rickman made his first movie at 41. This guy's a ninja at 74. It is never too late to, to live your dream. Because, yeah, he'd been doing it for eight years. That means he started when he was in his 60s. And finally, we've learned if you're going to steal a car in order to ram a store for a robbery, choose your target well. The vape yeah. store is is not worth it. Yeah, like, and maybe just don't drive through the store and risk wrecking your getaway car. I don't know. Well, he stole the car. I didn't give a shit about the car. Right. But you still need to get away. Yeah, that's true. And driving through shit, you run the risk of disabling that vehicle. And I suppose you could steal another one, but you shouldn't, you wouldn't have to if you didn't do that. A head Work shot. smarter, not harder. Ah, yes. He's, he's got, he's going to cash in on that, that hard to find valuable and rare bong market.